things that are being said against minorities. All of those things are really divisive in my mind and are not aimed at bringing the United States together as a people. Many of the people that are addressing these issues of division are privileged people who really don't understand what discrimination is. up to you in an ideal world, where would we be? I'd like us as a society, not just with disabled people, but in general, to be one which respects the rights of all people from diverse backgrounds, including those with disabilities from diverse backgrounds. Right now, I'm really concerned about how during this 2018 election, the demagoguery that's going on the terrible things that are being said against minorities. All of those things are really divisive in my mind and are not aimed at bringing the United States together as a people. Many of the people that are addressing these issues of division are privileged people who really don't understand what discrimination means and how hatred maligning other people in our communities, selecting out certain groups of people depending on the day as people who are dangerous, I think really undermines the concept of the United States and a democracy. So I think we're really at a very dangerous place right now. The work that we're doing as a disability rights movement, working collectively with other civil rights movements across the board is really important because discrimination against any one person is discrimination against everyone. So ideally, where I would like us to be is looking at all people as equal, regardless of where people come from, their language, their religion, sexual orientation, color of their skin, etc. Also, I think in the area of disability, we really need to be able to have a much more empowered community. People who have disabilities themselves need to feel respected, need to have respect for themselves, where the, the environment of our communities, regardless of your disability, were accessible and that people were not afraid of discussing whether they had an invisible disability or a visible disability, what repercussions could be in their family, in their communities, in their employment. So the next series of questions are related to organizations that you've worked with both domestically and internationally. How does collaborating effectively with government organizations differ from non-governmental organizations? What is the key to working effectively with them to advance disability rights issues? I think the the value of working with DPOs and NGOs is that you can get a larger group of people supporting issues that you and others want to advance. If it's the inclusion of disabled girls and women in organizations doing women's work, but where they haven't included disabled girls and women, getting NGOs and DPOs together who believe that and can then work with the organizations that are working to advance the rights of women and be able to push them to be inclusive of disabled girls and women in their agenda. I think that's very important. I think if you look at the Me Too movement, it's important because issues affecting disabled girls and women can also be a part of the broader agenda of what the Me Too movement is working on. When we're working intersectionally, it is very valuable that people understand the types of barriers disabled people are facing so they can be more included in the broader agenda. It helps us become more included. It also, I think, helps others to see the breadth of disability 
these other groups that don't see themselves as disability rights organizations, they get a clearer understanding of, oh, yes, there are disabled people who are on our staff if we have them or who are volunteers uh, working in the organization. It's an opportunity to share information and learn from each other. Thank you. Yeah, I find what you just said very fascinating when you said we're very behind compared to other uh, rights organizations. Why do you think that is? Why is there such a lag? The development of a strong, robust disability rights movement within the U.S. is really still hampered by limited funds. Uh, we have a lot of organizations. Yes, maybe we need to create some more, but we need to support the good ones that are there. The voices of disabled people are still too quiet in the U.S. We need to be much more vocal when discrimination is happening. We need not to accept it. We need to recognize that telling our stories is really important. People in the general society really need to understand the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it needs to be told by disabled people, friends, and allies. And I'm hoping, you know, our movement will continue to grow. And also that our movement will be working more with the Latino communities, African-American, civil rights communities overall, the business communities and others, so that people really understand the diversity both of disability and us as people. We're different like everybody else, but we need to be able to express those differences. And in many cases, the way to do that is by removing barriers that have precluded us from participating equally. Every individual should feel dignity and pride in who they are, should be able to have the opportunity to work with others in the community to advance these rights. And I think, I don't know when this show is going to air, but it doesn't matter. November 6th is the next big election in the United States. There are big elections every two years. Disabled people not only need to be registered to vote, we need to vote. We need to let people know how we're voting, why we're voting. Politicians will support us and look to helping advance our rights if they believe that we vote in the local elections, for school board, for judge, for city council, for county board, for state positions and federal positions. We need to no longer be silent.